All right, well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kurt Naderville. I am the CEO of Rainstar Capital Group. And on the line with me today, I have uh, John White, who's one of our managing directors. Uh, hey, John, how are you? Uh, just fine, Kurt. Uh, pleasure to be on this presentation with you. Thank you. Excellent. So if you're watching this video today, uh, John has obviously sent you the link to this uh, video presentation. And the reason that we wanted to shoot this video presentation is to uh, very simply to help uh, streamline the process of uh, you as our borrower, or let's say you're one of our brokers or one of our banker referral partners, um, it really just to kind of streamline the process of helping us here at Rainstar Capital Group, you know, figure out if the transaction that you're presenting us, uh, you know, is a viable transaction, is one that we can do. We, we've obviously, I'm sure you've had a chance to check out our our website and our social media and stuff. We've built kind of one of the more robust uh, debt advisory platforms here in the U.S. with over 200 registered lenders on it. Uh, we have banks on the platform, but primarily our platform is built off of non-bank lenders. And so clients really enjoy working with us because we cover you know, the whole platform of commercial real estate, corporate finance, small business, and equipment financing. And so while we have one of the more robust lender platforms, um, you know, there definitely are transactions that we do not do. Okay? And I want to kind of start out with that. And then what we're going to do is kind of deep dive into these 16 questions that John is typically going to ask you uh, when we go through you know, our underwriting process. But when it comes to transactions that we don't do, uh, we just provide debt. Okay, we don't provide equity. So there's a lot of transactions, whether it be in commercial real estate or for businesses, they're looking for like an angel investor, or they're looking for um, like a venture capital investor, or um, maybe on the commercial real estate side, they need down payment money. Uh, to us, those are kind of what we term as 100% financing requests, right? Because the borrower has no skin in the game, they don't have no down payment. And then we don't get involved at all with any of that. I mean, typically our lenders lend, you know, 70 to 80% LTV of the asset. So, you know, if your business or your real estate asset doesn't have cash flow, that's going to greatly, um, that's going to greatly limit the number of lenders that we have on our platform that, um, you know, that, that we can then assist you with. Now, some of the other niches that we see requests for that, you know, we just don't get involved with are you know, like mining, you know, like gold mining. Um, we also get a lot of requests for like oil transactions, like somebody who wants to buy the oil leases or start up a oil or a coal mining deal. Any sort of project funding, if, if the borrower doesn't have like the, you know, the down payment or the skin in the game, uh, that's, that's just not a transaction that we spend any sort of time on. You know, where we're active is with existing businesses that typically do like 100 grand in revenue or more. Uh, you know, sophisticated commercial real estate investors and, and rental property investors. We we can help a startup that's doing you know investing in real estate, but again, they're going to have to have good credit, good liquidity. Um, the biggest thing on the commercial real estate side, for sure, is you know is is the down payment money. So so that that kind of just gives a very brief overview of, of the deals that we don't get. I mean, the, the first major question that we're going to ask, obviously is, you know, what are your revenues, right? What sort of revenues are you doing? And, uh, you know, if, if the business is not doing at least 100 grand of revenue, or if they're thinking, you know, they do a million dollars in revenue, and, and they're pretty confident if they get 5 million, uh, you know, from a lender that, you know, they're gonna, business is gonna skyrocket. Again, we don't really get involved uh, with that sort of what I would call a venture debt deal, right? Somewhere, you know, who's confident. There has to be some sort of asset that can be leaned against. And, and that's just kind of one of the things I would, you know, I would encourage you know, any of John's you know, partners or if you're a direct borrower that's working with John, just to kind of think about, um, just to kind of help, you know, us uh, streamline. So John, you want to add any thoughts to that? And then we can jump into kind of what these 16 questions are that we're going to ask wow. about the client. No, I you covered the, uh, the preliminary uh, very well, Kurt, uh, very, very concise analysis. Yes, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So in our space in the capital markets, you know, again, I feel like there's a lot of, especially in real estate, there's a lot of the uh, no money down folks, right? Who, um, you know, they've, they've watched the, you know, the uh, infomercials and they've seen that. Again, you, you can get lenders to lend you to 100% financing if it's like a private lender, right? You know, if it's somebody that maybe knows you, likes you, trusts you, somebody that's an affinity investor. Um, but, but, in, but, you know, typically in our space in the capital markets where, you know, with our 200 registered lenders, they're all, you know, private equity funds, hedge funds, uh, specialty finance firms, uh, fintech lenders. 
you know, they're going to require, you know, some sort of skin the game or they're going to have to have some sort of asset that they can, you know, that they can lead against. So typically the questions that John is going to ask you, and, you know, these are the same questions that if you're a referral partner of ours that we would want answered prior to you sending a package to John. Um, if you can just kind of get these, uh, you know, 15, 16 questions answered for us and sent over to John, this will greatly help to streamline the process. Um, because, you know, we always teach, you know, time is the one asset that you don't really you know, ever get back in life, right? So the first question is, you know, what, you know, obviously, what's the amount that's being requested? Second question is going to be, you know, what are the funds being used for, right? Uh, third, and, and John, you can jump in on this. Obviously, a borrower's credit report and credit scores is so crucial, right? Absolutely, yes. And the reason for that is because, you know, we we have to know which of our lenders it'll fit, right? Some of our lenders place a very heavy emphasis on credit, you know, the credit score of the borrower. Others of them don't. Maybe they're more focused on the cash flow. Maybe they're more focused on the credit or on the uh, collateral. But the key is to really know what the credit score is. And so typically we advise our clients go to uh, creditchecktotal.com. That's creditchecktotal.com for a dollar. The client can just grab their credit report. Um, you know, there's not a hard pull on it. They just pull it, they can send it over to John and, you know, he'll be able to see right then and there that, okay, this client does have a 650 score, a 730 score, a, you know, 520, you know, whatever it is, right? The fourth question to me, again, is, is probably one of the more important questions, you know, what has the revenue been for the last two years? Um, again, we typically like to only work with businesses that are doing at least 100,000 of revenue. If it's a commercial real estate deal, if it's an equipment deal, obviously there's a hard asset there. And so what that means is, um, you know, you can, you know, you can obviously, you know, have some sort of collateral that the lender can lend against. Uh, but if it's typically just like a cash flow loan, um, you know, the revenues are, are, are you know, are going to be really, you know, really important. So John's going to want to know what that is. And then John's going to want to obviously then get like your last, the last two year tax returns, uh, last six months bank statements, copy of your, um, you know, the credit report, but then also, you know, a copy of like your, your P&L and, and your balance sheet, right? Uh, John, you know, why don't you talk about number five? Why is, you know, number five so important, especially when it comes to like, like real estate? Well, the other thing is, you know, what your, your financial strength is. Uh, so, you know, you want to know what your, your current bank balance is. Uh, and also number six, do they want to go, uh, what, uh, what business debt does the, the, the owner, uh, the applicant have, uh, who do they owe it to? Uh, number seven, of course, if they have accounts receivable, what is their balance of the accounts receivable? How much money do they have outstanding? Uh, there's uh, accounts receivable funding programs we can have. Uh, number eight, of course, is do they have uh, purchase orders? People want to buy their products. Uh, do they have any purchase orders outstanding? Uh, you want me to go on, Kurt, or you want to take care? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, jumping into nine and ten. I mean, again, that that really speaks to you know what are the assets that the business owns, right? Do they own any equipment? Is there debt against them? Is there equity there, right? Uh, ten covers you know what commercial real estate does the business own? Again, is there any debt against it? Um, really, the reason we're asking all these questions, right, is we're trying to identify what you know where where the assets are because again, our lenders lend. They have to have a lean position against either hard collateral, cash flow, or the accounts receivables of the business, right? Yeah, so as we transition good. into number 11, um, again, what are maybe some additional forms of assets, right? Whether it be rental properties, it could be diamonds, it could be your Rolls Royce, it could be any sort of you know, hard asset. You know, we have lenders that will extend liquidity against those, those types of assets, right? Uh, number twelve is always the uh, the funny one, right, John? You know, any skeletons in the closet? Why, why don't Why don't you talk a little bit about why it's important that we right away on the front end figure out why us, you know, what the skeletons well, are? That's a that's a touchy question to ask, but we have to ask it to evaluate the the uh, client's uh, ability to get it, get any kind of a funding, uh, because tax liens are are a big problem with some borrowers. Uh, they have tax liens and uh, any of you that uh, are familiar with the way the IRS operates, a tax lien can be uh, very detrimental to getting credit and uh, they're generally, uh, uh, they won't subordinate to anybody. So a tax lien 
Uh, some cases we can provide funding to pay off the tax lien if the uh, uh, that the, the uh, borrower qualifies for that. So we need to know a general overall view of the, you know, who the borrower is, where he is, what's his financial strength, what are the, um, as, uh, the skeletons in his closet, uh, if you will, just a, a, a thumbnail overall sketch of him and, and him, his financial strength and, and wants and needs. Yeah, and it's important to, you know, to make note that if, you know, the borrower or the, you know, he or she has, you know, has any skeletons, to just bring them out in the beginning. I mean, the lenders' due diligence and underwriting departments normally are very strong. They're going to find out eventually, right? So sure. it's just better on our end with working with our borrowers if we know what those skeletons are. And then that way we can, you know, make sure we're not taking it to a lender that, like you mentioned, is going to have a major problem with a tax lien or a bankruptcy or, you know, any, any of the derogatory things that could be, you know, negatively impacting the bar. If, if we know them on the front end, well, that'll greatly help then to, um, you know, make sure we know which of our lenders aren't going to, you know, care as much about those, you know, those things. I think number 13 is a big one as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> we have a very robust debt platform here. And so, you know, if, if it's a banker or a referral partner or the borrower, you know, typically we like to find out, you know, what other lenders have you talked to, right? Um, and, and if you have talked to other lenders, what's been the reason that they're saying no, right? That, that question number 13, I think in and of itself will greatly uh, help us to figure out if we can help you, the borrower, right? Because the borrower can be telling us, well, I've, I've talked to 50 lenders already, and they're all saying no, then, you know, we're probably going to say no as well, right? Um, but if, you know, if they say, well, I've, I've talked to only my bank, I didn't know where to turn after that. The reason the bank, you know, said no is because, you know, I didn't meet their 700 plus credit score requirement or whatever it may be. Um, then there might be something for us to, you know, to work, there, work with there, right? Uh, 14, I think, is a big one as well. Obviously, most borrowers want their money yesterday, right? Um, but it's, it's one of those things where we do have to have a good understanding of, of what that time frame looks like, right? Because we then can match it up to our lenders who, you know, realistically will, um, you know, provide capital and liquidity in that time frame or, or not. And so it's, you know, it's important that we get that expectation. The final one is as well, a really important one, you know, the expectation of rate. You know, again, with non-bank lenders, they're going to charge, you know, more than the 3 to 6% that the, the bank will charge, right? So, you know, understanding what the borrower is, you know, expecting from a rate perspective is really important. You know, have they ran their financial modeling and identified what the, you know, the, the largest interest rate is that they could cover based on the income of the business, the property, or, you know, whatever it may be. And so, you know, expectation of rate is, you know, I think just one of the most, you know, crucial, crucial things. So, uh, John, is there anything else that you want to add to this? I mean, I, you know, these questions obviously I think do a fairly good job of, of covering, you know, what we're looking for to figure out if there's a deal or not. Is there anything else you want to add from your experience? No, this is, this is a very precise uh, thumbnail sketch, if you will, of this, the uh, borrower and their, what, I mean, over the years I've gotten, uh, huge PowerPoint presentations and very, very elaborate business plans. And, and that's all right if they want to go to the time. To, but, but basically, if, if we know the answers to these 15 questions, uh, there's about a 98% chance that we can say, yeah, we can probably get you funding or well, we, we probably won't be able to get you get you funding and we don't have to waste their time or, or our valuable time in digging into things uh, that, uh, I mean, the, back, to, back to the number 12, the uh, skeletons in the closet. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, people are misrepresent them sometimes. Oh, I didn't, didn't know I had a tax lien. Well, right. with a grain of salt. So, so if they're truthful and honest about us, um, I mean, sometimes we have to say no. That's just the nature of our business. But, but the more information we have up front uh, initially and in our initial contact with them, the better we can do a quick evaluation of whether they are fundable or not. And then if we feel just based on these answers 
that we can take their financial requests to any of our lenders, then, then we're both using our time productively. So, so uh, you know, the answers to these questions are vital first step in getting, uh, getting a lending request uh, up and running. Yeah, absolutely. And I think after watching this video, you know, if, if you're you know, looking at our, our company and our platform, kind of what we do, you know, just, just shoot a quick email to John to answer these, you know, 15 questions for him. Again, John is well-versed on our product line and our platform. He's well-versed in the capital markets. He'll be able to look at this, you know, the answer to these 15 questions and come back and say, yep, you know, I think there's maybe something we can do here or no, sorry, you don't have any revenue, or oh, no, sorry, you know, you don't have you know, any assets that can be leaned against, or you know, whatever the case may be. And, and again, you know, what we try to do is provide education to the borrower, where you know, maybe they would fit, but their credit score is down. Well, then we would probably recommend they get in some sort of credit restoration program, right? Or let's say the revenues of their business are down, they're not gonna qualify, because they're just restarting a business, for example. Well, then we'll you know, give them you know, advice on, you know, Get, get it up to this revenue amount, then we can you know, re, you know, kind of reconnect with you. So, so education to me is one of the most important things um, and then managing time effectively both for the Bauer and for, you know, for, for Rainstar's team is important. And again, if we can't get the deal funded, does that mean that you can't ever get the deal funded? No, not at all. You, you might have a, a private investor, right? Or, or a high net worth individual or a rich uncle or a rich aunt that we could you know, lend to you or, or do the deal, right? And that's great, right? And, and typically we'll try to explain to the client, you know, yeah, you want to go look at, you know, a private lender, a JV partner, whatever it may be. Uh, but, but on our end, uh, just to streamline everything, if you can get these 15, 16 questions over to us and over to John, uh, that will greatly, uh, greatly expedite the, the process and allow us to uh, help you in achieving your goals. So thank you, John. Appreciate your time today going through this. And uh, thank you to the, our partners and our borrowers that you know, watch this presentation. And we, we look forward to working together and create a good partnership going forward. Thank you. 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 I look forward to talking with uh, uh, anyone that, uh, that has any questions or any point we didn't make clear. Why uh, uh, look forward to uh, talking to anyone uh, and hopefully we can uh, provide a solution to their uh, to their funding needs. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks again. Yep, absolutely.